In this episode of American Greed, Christopher Dunch is a young spine surgeon with a big salary and an ego to match. They thought they had a young, hot neurosurgeon with cutting edge skills and excellent training. But instead of helping patients, he hurts them badly. I mean, it was, it was the worst. I mean, I'd never seen anything like it. Leaving one after another maimed, paralyzed, even dead. First thing I remember is not being able to move. What was going through my head at that time was, uh, what did he do to me? And yet this killer surgeon keeps on operating. American Greed sits down with some of those closest to the story to find out what drives Dunch's reign of terror from the delusions of grandeur. Anyone close to me thinks that I am likely something between God, Einstein, and the Antichrist. To the mounting debts. Surgery was his out. Um, that was how he was going to make his big bucks. To the hospitals that pass the buck, according to lawsuits. When hospitals look at somebody like Christopher Dunch, I think they see dollar signs. Leaving Dunch's victims at the mercy of the man now known as Dr. Death. In March 2012, a school librarian goes to a Dallas hospital for a routine back surgery and bleeds to death. Three months later, another patient comes to another hospital for a neck surgery, where she suffers a stroke and later dies. The day after this operation, a third woman goes under the knife hoping to fix her back issues, then wakes up screaming in pain. What all three have in common is surgeon Christopher Dunch, seen here in a cramped interrogation room at Dallas Police Headquarters. You moved here from, was it Tennessee? Is that right? That's correct. Oh, OK. So you just started, you, you did all your, your schooling there, and then you came? Yeah, med school, PhD, graduate school, residency, uh, fellowship is fine. It all sounds impressive. But a prosecutor will say that in Dallas, Dunch injures 33 out of 38 patients in less than two years. And now the once promising doctor has gone from an operating room to an interrogation room. Hi, Dad. This is Christopher. I was supposed to come home tonight, as you know, and I'm not now. Unexpectedly, the police came and picked me up uh, regarding the, the, the DA issues that I mentioned to you. Uh, this is the phone of one of the detectives. If you would please call him back, he'll tell you what's going on. I had no idea what's going on with Bond and what's going to happen next. So I'll call you as soon as I can. Love you. Thanks. Christopher Dunch's career as a doctor starts many years earlier in Memphis, Tennessee. There, he completes a joint MD-PhD program and a neurosurgery residency at the University of Tennessee at Memphis College of Medicine. Then he remains in the city to complete a spine surgery fellowship. His resume is about 12 pages long, so he looks really good on paper, exactly the kind of doctor that um, you'd be looking for. In all, Dunch spends 15 years in med school, his residency, and his fellowship, a process meant to ensure he's got what it takes. Martin Lazar is a Dallas neurosurgeon who first reviewed some of Dunch's cases on behalf of plaintiff's attorneys. When you operate on the brain or the spinal cord, the good job has to be a damn good job. It can't just be journeyman. But Dunch's resume reveals an overwhelming interest in the PhD part of his dual MD PhD degree. With his name on multiple academic papers, patents and biotech startups, he is clearly met with some early success, and he doesn't keep it to himself. In emails, he describes himself as a supernova sophisticated savant and the best surgeon and scientist and every thing I decide I want to be. I can't remember how he phrased it once, having like God knowledge, I believe is what, how he referred to his knowledge. That was like, you know, one of our problems. 
In her first television interview, Wendy Young tells American Greed she meets the up-and-coming spine surgeon in Memphis one late night. I had worked at a strip club before. You know, I'd seen him around. I thought he was cute. And then, you know, I, it was like towards the end of the night. It was very loud and all the girls were over there. I think they knew he was a doctor. So, of course, that's where you're going to go for your money. Dunch and Young will eventually have two children together. But by the time they meet, the up-and-coming doctor is facing a mounting pile of debt. Bankruptcy records later show that he owes $112,000 on one student loan and $19,000 on another, $127,000 on a home, and he has debts to his father that will grow to equal $220,000. All added up, Dunch is nearly a half a million in the hole. I think he learned very early on that research maybe wasn't where he was going to be making his money. And so surgery was his out. Um, that was how he was going to make his big bucks. If Dunch's goal really is making big bucks, he's chosen the right specialty. The amount of money that a hospital gets for what we do uh, is in the millions and millions of dollars for a single neurosurgeon. Dunch is recruited to work as a spine surgeon in Dallas in 2010. His starting salary, $600,000 a year plus bonuses. Kay Van Wey is an attorney who will later represent many of Dunch's patients. He was dead broke when he came to Dallas. Here was an opportunity for him to start right off with a very, very handsome salary and with opportunity to make tens of millions of dollars. At first, Dunch will operate at Baylor Medical Center at Plano, now called Baylor, Scott, and White. They thought they had a young, hot neurosurgeon with cutting edge skills and excellent training. And therefore, he would be a very profitable addition to their medical staff. They're not alone in thinking they've landed a catch. Dallas is originally where I'm from. And I decided, you know, if you go to Dallas, I'll go with you. You know, in the beginning, he talked about marriage. I'm Mr. Prince Charming. I'm going to change your life. You know, I left with him and then believed in him. And then, you know, he just kind of fell apart. Now in Texas and about to start a $600,000 a year job, young surgeon Christopher Dunn seems to be feeling confident. In an email, he says he's come to the city to do my thing, build my empire, party and f with models without knowing their names to make money. Doing so involves something Dunn seems to be good at, self-promotion, including this paid infomercial. I treat all patients non-surgically at first, if at all possible. Uh, and then if they fail that sort of stage of the process, then they come back to me to discuss surgical options. But Dunch has other ways of letting everyone know just how good he is. When he was in conversations with colleagues, he would just talk about his training. He was going to be the greatest minimally invasive spine surgeon in Dallas. And he came down to Dallas to clean everything up because most of the work here was being done wrong. Uh, these were extraordinary statements coming out of the mouth of someone that just got finished training. I'd never heard anyone talk like that in my entire career. If Dunge's words to his colleagues are troubling, they're nothing compared to the deeply delusional thoughts he shares in private. In December 2011, he writes the following in an email. Anyone close to me thinks that I'm likely something between God, Einstein, and the Antichrist. Because how can I do anything I want and cross every discipline boundary like it's a playground and never, ever lose? What I am being is what I am. One of a kind. A mother stone cold killer that can buy or own or steal or ruin or build whatever he wants. Three weeks after Dunge sends this rant, Vascular surgeon Randall Kirby operates alongside Dunch, 
giving him the chance to evaluate the new arrival's self-proclaimed skills. I mean, he could not wield a scalpel. I mean, it's just, it was pathetic. 